Hi everyone, welcome to episode 22. So today I'd like to get some audio implemented into the game at last. So uh, I've got a little audio file prepared. Um, you can download it from the description. So it's just got a uh, bunch of different sound effects, some gunshots, uh, also some music composed by Diego Adamo. Very funky. So uh, let's let's go ahead and create a new C sharp script. We're going to call our audio manager, and we're going to create a new empty game object in our scene. Just put that at the center, and we can call that our audio manager. Just attach the script, and let's open it up. So I want to have. Uh, three floats for the different volume controls we're going to be implementing into our menu later on. So it'll be the master volume percent, the uh, the sound effects volume percent, and finally the music volume percent. So we can uh, control each of those two channels separately. Let's now make a public method, a void method, uh, for playing a sound. So this can take in just an audio clip and a vector 3 for the position to play the sound at. And uh, this will just make use of the audio source dot play clip at point method. And we can just pass it in the clip and the position. And since this is a sound effect, we'll give it a volume of sound effect volume percent multiplied by master volume percent. So this play clip at point method is very handy for short sounds like most sound effects, uh, but it's, it's not entirely appropriate for music because you can't change the volume of the clip while it's playing. You can only give it a sort of initial uh, volume. So if you've got a music track playing and the the player wants to sort of change the volume settings, he's going to have to wait for the next track to begin before those changes actually take any effect, uh, which is not ideal. So we want to have an actual audio source game object in our scene to be playing the music so we can adjust the volume of that whenever we want. So we are in fact going to have two audio sources uh, for the music so that if we're playing a track and then we want to crossfade to another track, uh, we can we can do that easily. So let's create an audio source array. Um, just call that music sources. And then in our awake method, we can say music sources equals new audio source array with a size of 2, and then we can just do a quick for loop, 4 and i equals 0, i less than 2, i plus plus. We want to create a new game object in our scenes, so we can say game object, uh, new music source is equal to a new game object, and we can just give that a name, say we call it music source uh, plus its number, so that can just be, say, i plus 1. Then we want to add the actual audio source component to that. So we'll say new music source dot add component of type audio source. Um, the add component method actually returns the component that it's just added, which is very useful. So we can say um, music sources i is equal to that newly added component. Uh, finally, to keep things nice and organized in our scene, let's just parent the new music source to our uh, audio manage game object. So transform.parent is equal to this transform. All right, so if we save that, let's go into Unity quickly, press play. Uh, we should have two little music sources pop up here. Okay, great. So, uh, going back into MonoDevelop, we can create a new method, a public void play music. This also takes an audio clip for the music clip. 
um, and we can give it an optional float for the fade duration if we want to sort of fade the clip in. So say that's equal to one second by default. So we, when we're fading the music, we're going to want to know which music source currently has a clip playing. So let's make an int here to keep track of that. We can call that active music source index. All right. So when we want to play a new music track, we can say that the new active music source index is equal to one minus the old active music source index. So it will basically just go zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, and so on, uh, which is great because we only have uh, two elements in our music sources array. So we can then say that the music source with an index of active music source index has its clip set to the provided audio clip. And we can then tell that music source that it must start playing. Now the fade obviously has to happen over time, otherwise it's not much of a fade. So we're going to want a coroutine. Let's create a little I enumerator, call that maybe animate music crossfade. Takes in a float for the duration of the fade. And we'll call that in our play music uh, method. So we just say start coroutine, animate music crossfade, and pass in that duration variable. Okay. So uh, what's wrong? I need another bracket there. So we can have a float percent initially equal to zero for how far into the crossfade we are. And then we can just have a little while loop. While percent is less than one. So while we're still crossfading, we want to increase our percentage by time dot delta time. And then we want to multiply that by the speed of the crossfade, which will just be one divided by the duration. So one divided by duration. Then we can say uh, music sources active music source index. So this is the one that we're fading in from zero. So we'll set its volume equal to mathf.lerp between zero and the sort of maximum music volume, which will be the music volume percent multiplied by the master volume percent. And then we give it the percentage to interpolate between those two values. So we want to do the opposite for the non-active music source index. So we can get that by just going one minus again. So we want its volume to go from the maximum volume down to zero. All right, and we need to add in our little yield statement. So yield return null. Okay, let us see if that's working. Uh, so I'm going to go into Unity. Hang on, we've got an error. Let's fix that first. Uh, so I meant to say plus equals. Okay. Um, let's create a little C sharp script. We can just call this our music manager. And I'll apply that to the audio manager game object. And in here, we can maybe just have uh, public audio clip, um, maybe a audio clip array. Now let's just make it an audio clip for now. Um, we can call this the main theme and another audio clip, um, call this maybe the menu theme. All right. So in the start method, um, we want to tell the audio manager to play the well one of these audio clips 
Um, but at the moment, we don't have a very convenient way to access the audio manager. We'd have to actually get a reference to it using sort of get component or find object of type. And uh, since we want any, any script in our, in our game to be able to conveniently access the audio manager, um, that's not really ideal. But what we can do, since there is logically only one audio manager ever present in the game, uh, we can make it a singleton. So all that entails is just having a public static reference to the audio manager. Uh, we can call that instance. And then in the awake method, we can just say that the instance is equal to this. So now, if in our music manager we were to say audio manager, we could get that static instance, which is now a static reference to the actual instance of the audio manager class in our scene. So we can then call play music on that instance and pass it in, say, our menu theme, give it a fade duration, say, of two. And then just to test things out, let's, uh, let's add a little if statement in the update method. Say if input dot get key down, say I press the space key, then I want to crossfade to the main theme. All right, over let's say three seconds. Let's give that a try. I'm just gonna have to assign those audio clips quickly. So main theme and menu theme. Let's press play. Okay, so that faded in nicely. I'll now press uh, spacebar. And we've got a nice little crossfade. Very classy. Okay, let's, uh, let's go ahead and just start implementing some of these sound effects. Uh, our audio manager isn't quite finished yet, but we can work on it more later. So let's open up our gun script perhaps to start with. Um, and down here maybe Maybe it's best suited under the effects header. We can have public audio clip um, shoot audio and then a public audio clip reload audio. All right. And then uh, when we shoot, say down here, we can say audio manager dot instance dot play sound pass in the um, the shoot audio and for the position that will be you can just give it transform dot position okay and let's copy that and find the reload method so over here play sound reload All right, that should be okay. Let's, uh, let's find our gun prefabs over here. And let's start assigning to some of these. So gun shoot, gun one reload. Um, okay, so this is all set up. Um, it would probably be a good idea in our audio manager um, when we're given a, an audio clip to first just make sure that it's not null uh, before we play it. So if clip not equal to null, only then will we try play it. Okay, so I'd quite like it if the um, if the audio was being played as if as if it was sort of being heard by the by the player. Uh, at the moment, of course, the audio listener is attached to the main camera all the way up in the sky over there. Um, so let's remove it from the from the main camera. And uh, it, it would be a bit awkward to attach the audio listener to the player directly, because when the player dies, the object will be destroyed, and then we won't have an audio listener in our scene anymore, uh, which wouldn't be good. So maybe what we can do instead to get around this is just create an empty child of the audio manager. Let's just call this our audio listener. Attach 
a audio listener component to that. And uh, then in the in the audio manager class, we can have a reference uh, to our audio listener transform as well as the player transform. So let's just set those in the awake method. So audio listener equals find object of type audio listener and we want to get the transform component of that and then player t equals find object of type player dot transform. So then if we have a little update method we can say that as long as the player is still alive, in other words, if the player transform is not equal to null, then we can set the position of the audio listener equal to the position of the player. All right, um, I'm also just going to quickly take this opportunity to turn down the volume a lot so you can still hear me talk while we're playing. Okay, so let's give this a go. We're still getting this um, annoying error uh, sometimes when we skip uh, through the waves using our dev mode hacks. But uh, yeah, it's not very high priority since it won't actually happen when you're playing the game regularly. We'll try to fix it at some stage though. Whoa, that, that wave's hard. Okay. So I'm going to wrap up this episode. That's looking, or rather, sounding nice. Um, next episode, we'll continue to work on our audio manager a bit. There are a couple of things we still need to do. And we can also uh, implement the rest of the sound effects. Until then, thanks for watching. Cheers.